we will move on to our next topic in the lesson major crops this this you can see from page 36 to 42 okay now we stopped saying or listening to understanding that different kinds of crops are grown in india in different parts according to the climatic or geographical conditions needed for each crop all crops cannot be grown anywhere everywhere because the climate is not the same and the crop demands different climatic conditions so according to the geographical conditions and the land available etc and the climatic conditions necessary for different crops different crops are grown in different parts of the country and it can include food crops it can include non food crops fiber crops beverage crop etc beverage crops are the tea coffee okay now we'll go move on now the first one is the rice paddy rice it is a staple food for most states of our country for most people of our country rice is a staple food and it comes under karif crop yesterday i told you karif crop starts with the onset of the monsoon and crops that need good amounts of water while growing comes under that so rice needs plenty of water so it is a karif crop and it needs high temperature humid climate and 50 to cm 50 to 75 cm of annual rainfall usually this crop is grown in coastal areas and deltaic regions in the deltas of rivers why in the coastal regions and delta regions because you have if you look on to the map given on page 37 in your textbook on page 37 in your textbook you have a map given you have a map given on page 37 in your textbook can you see the coastal regions green in color the deltas of different rivers krishna kaveri are here the indo gangetic plain etc so the crops the crop rice is grown in coastal areas and deltaic regions because of the fertile alluvial soil presence of rich fertile alluvial soil the flat land that is available for cultivation la in plenty land is available in plenty there so the next is wheat it is a staple cereal crop and it is a rabi crop so it needs a cool growing season it needs a cool growing season then it requires 50 to cm cm of rain and it grows in black soil usually in punjab haryana those areas wheat is grown that was a crop that was experimented for green revolution the third is the millets it is a rain fed crop millets millets are rain fed crops jowar bajra and ragi are the important millets grown this crop these crops millets which includes jowar bajra and ragi they are of high nutrition value and so most those people who cannot afford rice or wheat in their in their uh, diet they will use the, these food crops the next one is the maize the next is maize the next crop is maize this crop is used both as a food and a fodder crop it is a food and a fodder crop it is used by people and also it is a crop given as food to animals it is given as food to animals it requires a temperature between 21 to 27 degrees and grows well in alluvial soil it grows well in alluvial soil so children remember there is nothing much to explain in this just the geographical conditions where it is grown and what all climatic conditions is necessary for the different crops given that you have to learn it as it is from the textbook for that to make your e learning easy for this particular topic you can prepare a table in your notebook under the following heads first write the name of the crop and then the temperature rainfall humidity if necessary if soil is given that and the unique characteristics of or the particular uh, characteristics of 
each crop and prepare a table so that you can learn easily. You need not flip the pages while you are revising. You just look into the table and everything is there before you. There. The maize is, uh, as I said, it's a food and fodder crop. It is a carif crop. It is grown in places where the temperature is between 21 and 27 degrees and it grows well in alluvial soil. So states like Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar are good for the growing of maize. The next is the pulses. Pulses, you know, urdal, the, then moong dal, peas, all that come under pulses. These pulses are important in agriculture or in farming because they are leguminous crops. You must have known what leguminous crops, uh, learned what leguminous crops are. What are leguminous crops? Those crops are grown for what reason? Because these crops help in the restoring of soil fertility. These crops help in the restoring of soil fertility. So these are grown in between. The next is the non-food crops. Uh, the other, other crop, the next one is the sugar cane. It is from sugar cane that we get the sugar that we keep using. It is a tropical as well as a subtropical crop. It grows well in hot and humid, cli in hot and humid climate and it is in those places where sugarcane is grown, instead, if rain is not good enough, then they will depend on irrigation facilities. The next is and uh, the next is the oil seeds. Different kinds of oil seeds, linseed, cotton seed, uh, all are grown in different parts of a country. And these, most of these oil seeds, they are edible and used as cooking medium. They are used as oil seeds. They are most of them are they are edible and they used for cooking. They are used for they are used for cooking. The next is the two beverage crops, the tea and coffee. We know tea is grown in the foothills of mountains, in the slopey regions in of Assam, Kar uh, Karnataka, etc. Those are the places in Tamil Nadu, also the Munar tea plantations. In Kerala also in different parts of Kerala also you can find tea and coffee plantations. Both of them come under beverage crop. Both of them come under beverage crop. That is the, the tea plants, you know, they need a uh, cool growing uh, climate throughout the year. They need a very cool climate there because their tenter leaves get uh, destroyed or damaged when there is high temperature. So they need a cool climate throughout their growing season. Even coffee is the same. Their berries get damaged when there is too much of temperature. So uh, both these crops are grown in such areas where there is a cool climate. Other than that, other than these crops mentioned here, rice, wheat, um, then uh, or maize, millets, pulses, uh, tea, sugarcane, etc. There are also places in India, in Himachal, then in Meghalaya, then in parts of Mysoram, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, etc. that fruits of different varieties are grown. The fruits of different vari varieties are grown. In Nagpur, you must have seen when you go out shopping with your parents uh, during the orange uh, season, you can see Nagpur oranges, the label there on the shelves. So the uh, city Nagpur is known for growing oranges. In Meghalaya, in Chirapunji also oranges are grown. These two places, oranges grown in these two places are very much popular all around the world. Then mangoes, mangoes of different varieties are grown. The Alfonso mangoes that that are, uh, that are uh, gr um, grown uh, in India is very much popular in other parts of the world. The great, there is great demand for our fruits. There. The next is the non-food crops. We have the non-food crops that where you learn about rubber. This crop rubber, it requires moist and humid climate with rainfall of more than 200 centimeters of temperature. It is grown well in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. It is an important raw material for textile industries. The next one is the fiber crops. The next is, this is a non-food crop. Rubber is a non-food crop. 
then what is it non food crop at the same time it is used as a raw material in various industries it is used as a raw material in various industries next what are we going to learn about we are going to learn about fiber crops can you name a few fiber crops can you name a few fiber crops yes silk is a fiber crop is it a natural fiber yes. there we have got cotton we have got a co uh, cotton then hemp anything else jute is also a fiber crop so natural silk cotton hemp and jute are examples for fiber crops just look at these four names and try to visualize the cropping methods of these crops is there any difference in any of the way this uh, any one fiber at least of these is got yes this silk we can say it is an odd one is it not uh, why is it said to be an odd, uh, odd one because all these three cotton hemp and jute they are grown on soil we get it from the plant is it not but whereas silk from where do we get it we we get it from the cocoons of silk worms we get it from the cocoons of silk worms these three they are got from the crops grown the plants grown whereas this is this one silk is from the silk worm the cocoons of silk worms so what do you call this uh, process of uh, growing uh, or keeping of silk worms what do you call them the rearing of silk worms for the production of silk is called as what the rearing of silk worms so the keeping of silk worms for the production of silk is called as what sericulture it is called as sericulture it is called as sericulture so we learned about different kinds of crops and now we have reached fiber crops the next is the cotton crop the cotton crop where uh, where is it usually grown right from your lower classes you have been learning about the growing of cotton what is the best suited soil for the growth of cotton black cotton soil black cotton soil is the best suited soil for the growing of cotton it is a raw material raw material for the textile industries it requires high temperature it requires high temperature ra light rainfall and also irrigation and it needs about 210 frost free days and bright sunshine for its growth you have seen the cotton balls is it not the cotton so it gets damaged when there is moisture in the air so it can be grown only in on in those areas where it is dry for almost 210 days and needs a bright sunshine because it should get dried up and then the pot breaks open is it not and then you will know that the cotton is ready for harvest so it is grown in if black soil is the soil suited which are the states where can we can find cotton grown maharashtra gujarat madhya pradesh karnataka is not those states which are which are in the del, del uh, in the peninsula region is not where you have the deccan plateau major cotton producing states are maharashtra gujarat madhya pradesh karnataka and andhra pradesh then you have jute then you have jute what kind of a crop is jute is it a food crop is it a beverage crop or a plantation crop no it is a fiber crop is it not jute is a fiber crop jute is a fiber crop and it grows well on well drained fertile soil water should not be getting collected there so it should it grows well on well drained fertile soils and high temperature is needed for its growth it is grown in west bengal assam bihar etc it is used for various purposes what are the important uses in making gunny bags in ma making mats in rope making then 
carpet making. These are some of the uses of this fiber jute. But these days it is said that the cost of production of jute is too high and hence what happens it is losing its market. So people are not ready to buy the raw material at such a high cost and then they will have to sell it at very, the finished product at very high prices. So they are not ready, the traders are not ready to buy these expensive fibers. So they are losing their market to synthetic fibers and packing materials particularly the nylon. They are losing their market. So it, once these crops were of greater demand but now because alternatives are coming out they are not getting enough demand for these crops. So this is all what we have to learn in this lesson agriculture. We learned about, let us recap or uh, sum up all what we learned. We learned about the importance of agriculture, then we learned about the types of farming, we learned about the three cropping patterns of which rabi and carif are very important. Then what we learned, we learned about the contribution of this sector agriculture to national income, job or employment opportunities and outputs, how it helped in developing the food security system. Then we learned about how globalization has helped in the agricultural development, how globalization has helped in agricultural development and then we came to see the different crops that are grown in different parts of our country depending on the geographical conditions and the climate conditions that each crop needs. Hope you have understood the lesson. If you have any doubts, you can clear.